Hi, I'm Cindy Nations. I'm managing partner with the Nations Law Firm. And today we have with us some very special guests. We have Grant Marnier and his mother, Julie Coy Marnier. And Grant is an author, an artist, and an advocate for autism. And we're very glad to have you all here. Thank you for taking time out to come visit with us. And Thank do you, you. want to start out by telling me uh, just a little bit about Asperger's syndrome and autism and, and what that is about? Okay, that's, that's usually my area of expertise. Right. Uh, Grant has Asperger's syndrome or autism because mm -hmm. everything's changing now as of April 2013. So it's now called Autism Spectrum Disorder. He was diagnosed at the age of five and has received early intervention and a lot has happened since his diagnosis with autism. Now you said everything is changing. What's changing in April? Uh, the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual uh, for the criteria for psychiatrists to uh, deem what the diagnosis may be, mm -hmm. used to be Asperger's used to have uh, autistic disorder and PDD NOS, which is now being condensed under one umbrella of autistic spectrum disorder. Okay. So it'll be ASD. So from now on, we're going to hear ASD. Okay, so it's going to be the three, what we're originally three separate, completely separate codes and separate diagnoses are going to now be all under one umbrella. And with the Asperger's syndrome diagnosis, Grant received the benefits that he needed and the services that he needed with speech therapy and even in the public schools with his ARDS and his IEPs uh, catered or customized to what he needed mm -hmm. because he had that diagnosis. If you don't have that diagnosis, your child can get lost right. in, in the school system. Right. And speaking of school, today is Monday, and either either you're skipping school or you have some other <laughs> situation. <laughs> what is what what how how is your school? Where do you go to school? I go to Focus Academy. It's a private school with uh, online teaching and social classes. I go there two days a week. So for the other days of the week, I can work on my schoolwork mm -hmm. online at home or pretty much anywhere. This way I can do stuff like my interviews, the art, mm -hmm. sh art shows I do, and still have time for my art. Excellent. So this way I can go to school and do my art. Let's talk a little bit about your art. It's called eco art? Yes. And what does that mean? What do you do? Well, the pa well, it's not technically paint, it's paper. Grant, tell me a little bit about this picture that we're looking at now. This was the first piece ever made by the recycled paper I use. Mm -hmm. However, it started out as a, it was supposed to start out as paint, but that's when I got painter's block and I just didn't have that feeling anymore. Mm -hmm. So my mom decided, let's try paper instead. So got some magazines, found some construction paper to work with and some, some used up calendars. And I made that. And do you know about how many pieces of paper it took to make that? This took over 3,000 pieces of paper. You, you get to bring in the environmental aspect of it and recycle and reuse and, and turn discarded things into beautiful artwork. Sustainable art yes. forever and ever. And this, by the way, is your calendar, mm -hmm. the 2013 Paint by Paper calendar which has just a few of your pieces in here and the peacock the peacock's in here in august in august. august thank you <laughs> you know where to find it those are 12 oh, yeah, grant, uh, pieces and grant has 35 originals today so this is the peacock and there's actually beads in this mm -hmm. the beads are his crown and on the fat and on his little feathers uh, what'd you use for the feet and the crown the f you know those little hairpins uh-huh that's what i use for the feet for the feet <laughs> wow that is really, really beautiful. And how long does it take you, about how long does it take you, like to do this one, how long did it take you to do this? Well, each piece varies between weeks to a month to make. Mm -hmm. That one? I would think it would take much longer. That <laughs> took a few weeks to make. Mm -hmm. You want to explain your puzzles? Uh, the puzzles, well, you see, I had to use many different variety of colors because I wanted to make this peacock very colorful. Mm -hmm. That's why you, you see on the feathers it's pretty dang colorful. <laughs> but, over he but over here, this is actually, this part right here, actually yeah, the whole thing, it's actually from an actual piece of puzzles mm -hmm. put together this time. Because some, some of these aren't always put together. Right. Not like an actual puzzle where you just, you know, put them together. Mm -hmm. Those, these are actually laid on top of one another. 
The secret to getting a good piece <laughs> is to overlap paper. Right. Same with puzzles. So what do you do different with your puzzles? I tear the prints off them because mm -hmm. I like to have that flat surface. Right. And that's pretty unusual for an artist to do, right? It we have found he's the only artist in the world that does this, where he mm -hmm. takes each indiv individual puzzle and peels the print right off. So mm -hmm. it's paper flat thin. You started tearing up strips of paper a long time ago, right? How old was right. he? Uh, when Grant was about six, six. And, you know, you saw the paper, the love of paper at the age of four. But around six, all the tearing was happening, piles and piles of colors all over the house and all over the school. And, <laughs> and he was just happy with his paper, whether he was coloring, drawing, writing, tearing. He was just mesmerized with paper. He mm -hmm. always had to have paper. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. It wasn't hurting anyone. It wasn't hurting him, except a textbook or two, but we got through that. <laughs> <laughs> and now, do you sell your work, Grant? Is it for sale? Well, some of my originals are for sale. However, most of them aren't. <laughs> but we do sell reprints, like eight, like the 8x10s. Mm -hmm. We have, have also have calendars for sale, like the one you showed us, mm -hmm. and others. We even have these little post little cards. Okay, there is, on our, the month of October, we have an owl here that you did, a very beautiful owl. And your mother was telling me earlier about how this was made out of a Pirates of the Caribbean poster. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's the fourth movie, and you've heard of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Of course. He, you know, Johnny Depp, that funny guy. <laughs> What's this piece called? It's called The Caribbean Owl. The Caribbean Why? owl. Why? Because it was made of over 65 posters of the Pirates of the Caribbean. The poster he used. We saved one. So you took over 65 of this poster to cut out the pieces of paper to create this owl. Yep. Sure where? Here, let me show you. Here, right here was used for the mm -hmm. moon. If you look closely at the moon, you can see the bombs part, mm -hmm. the bomb part of the ships the right here. here. Right here, the mermaid's hair was used for the wing, right here. <laughs> That's fascinating. And then this part here. And so smoke area was used for the background of mm -hmm. the moon. And uh, I th a little bit of the green around here was used, was used a little for the bottom part. Very good. So the Caribbean owl. Mm -hmm. And I know you've done a lot of work with the community. And one thing that you're, that you're focused on is increasing awareness about autism. Yes. And tell us a little bit about some of the, some of the community work that you've done? Well, like I've, I've been going around to a lot of art shows, spreading the awareness around, showing my art and what what kids can do. Like sometimes at an art show, I let the kids help me with a certain piece I'm working on mm -hmm. so they can get a good feel of it. Because if they're good, they might have something. Because mm -hmm. each kid or anyone with autism might have, have a hidden talent down there. Mm -hmm. Sure. Whether it's autism or not, we teach environmental responsibility by reducing, mm -hmm. reusing, and recycling paper. But by having the visual art there, the children, it inspires them. And the adults. I've been asked many times, can I go home and try this? We're like, yes, that's a whole idea. Yeah. Say, let's, you know, help save the earth. So that's, that's one of our advocacy mm -hmm. is environmental responsibility. But there mm -hmm. is one message I do want the parents to know mm -hmm. is to tell them they have autism. If they have the signs of autism, tell them. You don't want them to just not know. That could really give them a lot of problems in the future. If they know, then they could learn to work with it, like I have. Right. That's very good advice. So I, I guess sometimes when parents have small children, or even as they get bigger, and they start showing signs of autism, and I know it, it can, I assume it can be difficult to diagnose or it can be a long, well, over very, a long time period. It's very diagnose. prevalent when they're young. Mm -hmm. So that's the important time to get your child to a psychiatrist or a neurologist and get the diagnosis, find out what it may be. But you ha when they're younger, there's a lot of challenges within mm -hmm. their sensories. You know, it, they have a lot of sensory issues and that's the best time to find. As they grow older, they learn to uh, develop coping skills. Mm -hmm. So they mask a lot of things that uh, would have been found when they were younger. But you know, a lot of parents are in denial at that young stage. They don't want that label, mm -hmm. but it's very important to start it very young. And also, I hear you just recently, last week, had a um, mass, you went to a masquerade ball, yes. which was a community event, a nonprofit mm -hmm. event. 
and you had a particularly special piece of artwork there. You want to tell us about that? Mm -hmm. uh, you mean Texas, our Texas? That was the name of the piece. Mm -hmm. It had a state of Texas, a Longhorn, an oil derrick, and a Lone Star made from wallpaper, poster paper, photo paper, and recycled puzzles, which mm -hmm. I'm famous for. <laughs> it's signed by me and a Texan linebacker, mm -hmm. Connor Barwin, number 98. Connor Barwin. And did he actually help you with this artwork? Yes. So you made it together? Mm hmm And how was that? Did you have to teach him how to do everything? I showed him what to do, <laughs> and he, ba he basically got it. It's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. We we're fortunate that Connor is an artist himself, and really? Connor is also an eco-activist as well. Oh, well, that's perfect. How many pieces of uh, paper do your art projects take? How many pieces of paper? Well, like the, the, uh, the Texas Art Texas, how many pieces of paper? Over 3,000 pieces. That over was on that one piece. Over 3,000 pieces. And mm -hmm. are, do you tear the pieces, or do you cut them now? It depends. Tear or cut. It depends on what I'm making. Okay. But you don't use machines or anything? It's all done by hand, right? All by these fingers. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to lose one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Time to insure them. <laughs> and um, so it was Connor Barwin that you did the artwork with. And did you get anything from Connor? Anything special? Hmm. Well, <laughs> he gave me his Texan jersey. He actually wore it. A game jersey. Mm -hmm. A game jersey. That's very exciting. What did you give Mr. Barwin? The piece. The Texas. Oh, a Texas, very good. A piece. Another piece. One mm -hmm. was auctioned Another for Texas, Mocha, Texas. which mm -hmm. sold for $4,000. And then we Grant made one for Connor Barwin, too. Oh, so that's Connor very has nice. the second one in the series. Mm -hmm. And you said it was made for Mocha. What is Mocha? Stand Mocha for? is the Museum of Cultural Arts Houston. Okay. And they are a uh, organization that works with uh, underprivileged children and artists. Mm -hmm. And do, they do a lot of art projects in the city of Houston. A lot of mosaic tiles, just mm -hmm. beautiful work. And I hear you also do some work with horses. Do you want to tell us about the equine therapy? <laughs> equine therapy, that's, you know, riding the, riding the mm -hmm. horse. You know, every time I ride the horse, it feels like meditation to me. And so how often do you get to go out there and ride the horses? When I can. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he doesn't even go out to ride. He volunteers. Mm -hmm. And he helps the little ones. He puts them on the horse for Miss Janice because, you know, he's a little taller and stronger. <laughs> he'll hold on to the children's legs while we're riding. Uh, so he also volunteers for equine therapy. And he rides. is this children who have autism or is it? Autism, cancer, oh, uh, other handicaps, yes. Okay. And the what's the name of the place? The Lady Horse Whisperer. The Lady Horse Whisperer. What's the name of the horse? Ah, well actually I know two horses mm -hmm. there. The first one I read, rode, rode <laughs> <laughs> was, the, was named Cactus. Mm -hmm. The other one is called Donjo. The word Donjo actually means hi, hi and goodbye, I think, mm -hmm. in Apache. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, and did you, did you uh, create art? because of one of the horses? Mm -hmm. One of the best pieces I made from the horses was a piece of Don Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, a piece of a horse, and that's him on the front. How many pieces? Uh, well, it, the pieces on it are over 6,000. Over 6,000 pieces, pieces of paper. Of paper. Mm -hmm. And after you made it, what, what happened with that piece? Did we sell it? No, we didn't sell it. I keep it in my room. One time I tried to show it to the actual horse, Don Joe. <laughs> he thought, it actually looked like he was looking in a mirror. I think he, he stepped back. <laughs> but what did you win? Uh, with that piece, I won the Austin Rodeo Eco Art Grand Championship. The, and when was that? That was in 2011. 2011. And you've won some other championships and awards. Well, yeah. I did win the Austin Rodeo again in 2012 with my mm -hmm. Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. And I hear that's one of your favorite pieces that you've done, the Mount Rushmore piece? Yes. What is it that you like about that piece? Well, it was actually one of the pieces that I was studying the, studying the history of America. Mm -hmm. It's also one of the first to have facial features, you know, mm -hmm. George Washington, Adams, Theodore Roosevelt, Lincoln. It's made over 4,000 pieces of recycled paper. And here's a funny fact. Mm -hmm. This is actually where I started make, started calling everything I do Coolages, because normally it's called collages, <laughs> Collage. but I call it coolages. And guess who commissioned Mount Rushmore? Who? President Coolidge. Really? <laughs> I know. Isn't that a funny coincidence? <laughs> that is a funny coincidence. 
So you call all of your, you do collages. Yep. Instead of collages, that's amazing. Because and, mm -hmm. think about it, they all look pretty cool, don't they? They look very <laughs> cool. They definitely, everyone is very cool. And what are some of the other awards that you've won? There was a Mayor's Award, I believe? Yes. I won the Houston, Ma Houston Mayor's Student Volunteer of the Year Award. And I think the other one was the Houston Mayor's Youth Advocate of the Year Award. Disabilities Youth Disabilities Advocate Youth of Advocate. the Year Kid. Award. Well, congratulations. Good job. And then I hear that there's something else coming up that's the, what is it, the Bayou Fest? Grant has been Tell selected to that. be in the Houston's Bayou Art Fest, mm -hmm. March 23rd and 24th, in the New Emerging Artist category. New Emerging Artists. There will be six new emerging artists at the uh, show. And this is a national level, right? Yes. So six new emer emerging artists at the national level, and you got picked as one of them. Congratulations. Thank you. How does that make you feel? It's both incredible and I'm honored. Are you excited about your future? <laughs> well, at this rate, yes. As, if everything keeps going like this, I think I'll feel be a good fu future. Mm -hmm. And what do you see in your future? Not you sure just yet. <laughs> but by the looks of it, I might continue doing this. Well, I think you should, definitely. Definitely found where you need to be in the right area. Well, it's important as a parent who lives with autism, has children with autism, that we help them find their career. It's not something mm -hmm. where they just leave at 18 and they go looking for a job. We, helped, we have to help them find that, redirect them, or direct them in a way. And when I saw Grant tear paper, I mean, not everybody knows about collaging, mm -hmm. and, but he just has taken it to a whole nother level. I mean, the patience that I could never have. I always say Grant right. came here to teach me patience. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have a lot of patients. And if someone wants to find out some more information about Grant and see what what's going on, you have a website, right? Yes, we do. What's your website? It's www.grants, no apostrophe, grantsecoart.com. Grantsecoart.com. And you can order calendars there? Yes. These calendars? Excellent. Do you have a motto in life that you go by? Yes. This, okay. this is my motto. It's not what I can't do. It's what I can do, but it can also be said like this. It's not what we can't do, it's what we can do. Mm -hmm. You know, because of autism, because we, we have autism, right. I have autism, yes. Okay. But mainly it's, it's not what I can't do, it's what I can do. <laughs>